Passion Saturday. We read today the we do be here in Phoenix, and we read today here the Gospel of actually tomorrow. And tomorrow is Palm Sunday, and tomorrow, Palm Sunday is the actual day of Palm Sunday. And on it, but however, on Palm Sunday, we consider primarily the crucifixion of our Lord. So we read the Passion tomorrow. So today is the Saturday before Palm Sunday, but today is the day when we actually consider the mystery of Palm Sunday. Whereas tomorrow, an actual Palm Sunday, other than handing out the palms, we consider primarily the crucifixion of our Lord. But today we read the Gospel, stand with the Gospel, but according to St. John chapter 12, on Palm Sunday, the Saturday of Passion Week. At that time, the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death also. For in his account, many of the Jews began to leave them and to believe in Jesus. Now the next day, the great crowd, which had come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took the branches of palms and went forth to meet him. And they cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young ass and sat upon it, for as it is written, Fear not, daughter of, of Zion, behold thy king come, sitting upon the colt of an ass. These things his disciples did not at first understand, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him, and that they had done these things to him. The crowd therefore which was with him, when he called Lazarus from the tomb, and raised him from the dead, bore witness to him. And the reason why the crowd was also went to meet him was that they heard that he had worked this sign. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Do you see that we avail nothing? Behold, the entire world has gone after him. Now there were certain Gentiles among those who had gone up to the worship at the feast. These therefore approached Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew again, and Andrew and Philip spoke to Jesus. But Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. And men and men, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remaineth itself alone. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. He who loves his life shall lose it. And he who hates his life in this world keeps it unto life everlasting. If any man serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also my servant shall be, my minister shall be. If any one serves me, my, fa my, fa my father will honor him. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, this is why I came to this hour. Father, glorify thy name. There came therefore a voice from heaven, I have both glorified it, and I will glorify it again. Then the crowd which was standing round and, and, and had heard, said that it, was, it had thundered. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, Not for me did this voice come, but for you. Now is the judgment of the world. Now will the prince of the world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, shall draw all things to myself. Now he said this, signifying by what death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that Christ abides forever. And how canst thou say, The Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus therefore said to him, In a little while the light is among you. Walk while you have the light, that darkness may not overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he goes. While you have the light, believe in the light that you may become sons of light. These things he just spoke, and he went away and hid himself from them. That's for the words of today's Holy Gospel. So in the name of the Father, Son, and the Amen. Today, this is Sunday, Saturday before Palm Sunday, but we consider today the mystery of Palm Sunday. And on that day, only six days before Christ was crucified, many things happened. And one of them was, our Lord said, He who loves his life shall lose it, and he who hates his life in this world shall keep it unto life everlasting. We're now having one little bitty test of the preparation for the Palm Sunday victory of Christ. He who loves his life shall lose it. There are many Catholics right now 
who are not receiving Jesus Christ. There are many Catholics right now who are not going to Mass. Heard only today of one bishop only, which is more than I thought there would be, one bishop only, some bishop in Alabama, who apparently is saying he is not closing his churches, that the people can still go to church in his diocese. Thousands of bishops throughout the, United, throughout the world, even though they're in the wicked Nova Sordo, they should have at least a recognition that we are made for God, and that man needs God. And that when there are troubles, he must return to God, and he must go to God. And who is the one to help people get to God? He is the priest of God. But the priests have locked themselves in their houses. And the priests have locked themselves in their churches and their rectories. And the priests are, God, are, are having their time off. One of our seminarians went out to buy some food the other day. And they saw him in the cassock, and they said, Oh, are you guys, I guess you guys have your time. I guess you guys are all... On vacation now, somebody told them in the mall and the store, in the grocery store, oh, I guess you guys are on vacation. You don't have to do church anymore. You don't have to take care of people anymore. So how's your vacation going? How does the world look at the priest? When here we are in a time in which souls are being told, do not go to Jesus Christ. Why? Because you might lose your life in this world. And it's interesting this comes right on Palm Sunday in the season of Lent and Holy Week. And our Holy Father has decided to cancel. He's going to cancel Holy Week. Jesus doesn't get to die this year. He doesn't get to rise from the dead this year. He doesn't get to save souls this year, but don't worry. He just doesn't do it really. He'll do it virtually. You can get the movie and you can watch it online. You can experience social distancing. We mentioned multiple things about social distancing recently. One problem with social distancing, for instance, if you have social distancing, you can't have a valid confession. Try it the next time you get heart surgery. After all, it's an unsafe environment. The doctor may have, he may have germs on his hands. So he needs to be able to do the heart surgery by social distancing. He must stand at least six feet away shoot lasers into your heart, grab a long bolt cutter, snap the arteries, get a backhoe, that's more than six feet, get a small backhoe, dig out the original heart, put in the new one, you're not supposed to put it anyway. They might miss here or there, break a few bones. But the important thing is social distancing. Now, the social distancing is being required is because you might possibly get sick. You might lose your life. And Jesus Christ said on Palm Sunday, those who love their life in this world, they shall lose it. Now, who was he speaking to on that day? He was speaking to young boys and young girls, young women and young men, in the year 33 AD. And they loved their life in this world. And they loved the city of Jerusalem, the center of the whole world. And a few years later, Romans would come, Burn down that city. A few years later, Romans would come and kill every man, woman, and child in that city. They would first starve them to death, and they would not surrender. And they would slaughter them, and they would destroy the temple that they loved so much, leaving not one stone upon another. They loved their life in this world. They lost it. And today, people love their life in this world. You see, the big worry today is not that you're losing sanctifying grace. Who needs that? But you're losing your job. You're losing your security. But don't worry. They're offering thousands of dollars. Everyone's going to get a check. They're going to take trillions of dollars and put it into people's hands. You're going to get money in your bank account. You're going to get a, 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 a lot of money to survive this great crisis. So you're not going to lose your job. You're not going to lose your health. Make sure you keep six feet apart from everybody. you got to be safe. Don't forget to wear your mask. Don't forget to wash your hands. Because you must love your life in this world. And when you have a problem, do not go to God. Do you think God doesn't notice? He notices. 
and there shall be a most severe punishment. And it's not going to be a punishment because of the bad guys that are ruling the world. It'll be a punishment because of the good guys, the Catholics, who think that it is better to be a really good citizen and not see this as a chastisement from God, but as a great blessing by which we'll greatly, more greatly appreciate one another. One priest said to Society of St. Pius X in an interview, he says, what's good about this, this great virus is that it makes us appreciate us, each other more. I know a lot of families right now living together every minute, fathers and mothers and children all together all day, in their house all day, they appreciate each other more. It just happens to be an increase of domestic violence. Obviously a lot of screaming going on in houses, but at least they appreciate each other more. And then, of course, they're going to be realizing now the Mass has been taken away. Let's appreciate it more. Let's appreciate it more. Let's see this as something beautiful and something wonderful. Let's have a greater appreciation. What about a sorrow for sin? What about the fact that God has sent out a chastisement upon us because of our wickedness? And this chastisement is interesting because it's self-inflicted at this point. We are happily missing Mass. Happily missing the sacraments. Because after all, safety is so much more important. And we're afraid of what might happen. Well, we all learned about our ancestors, how they stood for their faith. How they went after Christ. How they did not abandon Him. How they had to offer up everything in order to keep their holy faith down the last 2,000 years, including their own lives, their own possessions, their own jobs, their own security. They give up all these things. And the civilizations that destroyed them are now destroyed. But the faith that they kept in those civilizations still remains. Palm Sunday is an interesting day in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. He begins by weeping. He looks down over the city of Jerusalem, that city that's going to love him, that city that's going to praise him, that city that's going to lay palms before his feet. And why are they going to do that? Because he raised Lazarus from the dead. He raised a rich man from the dead. He cured the man who was born blind. And because of these two great miracles, never from the beginning of the world has a man been born blind and been cured from birth, from his blindness. Never has there a man been dead for four days and rotted in the tomb and risen from the dead after four days, rotted in the tomb. And it was his friend, Lazarus. And he's a super rich millionaire. And this great millionaire has risen from the dead, who was one of the richest men in all of Jerusalem. And so that this rich man was of the dead, a blind man was, was, was cured, and we believe in Christ because of his great miracles. We accept him as the true king of Israel. And the Lord Jesus Christ allowed himself to be praised today. Why? To prove to us two things. One, if he wants to be praised by men, he will be praised by men. If he wants to rule... In a human way, he can rule in a human way. It's only a matter of what he wants. And secondly, what's the value of praise of men? What's the value of palms thrown before the feet? What's the value of the great praise and all the world going after him because we believe in his miracles, because we believe in the great miracle of the mind born blind who can now see the great miracle of Lazarus risen from the dead. What is the value? How long does it last? On a nation retreat, we say, a very good retreat, the, the, the resolution lasts 11 days. What about on this resolution, Palm Sunday? Six days from now, Christ is dead. Six days from now, he's crucified. But notice the crack in the armor, even today. Six days from now, they will say, let him be crucified. Let his blood be upon us, upon our children. The same people that said, Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna to the king. And it's interesting, several points concerning the Pharisees on this day. They came to Christ and said, how dare you let the children praise you. They did not come to Christ and say, how dare you let the people praise you. Because the people were praising only with their lips. But the children were praising with their hearts. And they were praising with the fullness of their being. And their praise was rising to God. The praise of the adults was not. 
and the Pharisees, the servants of Satan, and the Sadducees, the servants of Satan, and the high priest, the servant of Satan, they knew that the people's praise was not so dangerous, but the children's praise was very dangerous. And therefore they said, How dare you let these children praise you? And Christ said to those wicked men, If the children did not praise me, the very rocks would cry out. Now what about the praise of those people? Was it all wonderful on Palm Sunday? When Christ on that morning looked over the city of Jerusalem, he wept and said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and those that I send to thee, how many times would I have gathered thee under my wing, but thou wouldest not. Right now, Christ wants to gather the sick under his wing, but they wouldest not. Right now, he wants to gather those that are suffering from financial hardships under his wings, but thou wouldest not. He wants those that are suffering from the great lack of love of God in their souls and living in the state of mortal sin, he wants to gather them under his wings, but thou wouldest not. He wants those in error and heresy to be gathered under his wings, but thou wouldest not. He wants those that have lost all charity to be gathered under his wings, but thou wouldest not. There's a lot of those that wouldest not. Therefore, Christ weeps over the new Jerusalem, which is our holy Roman Catholic Church. But there's a conservative movement. There really is. There's a conservative movement, and these are the good people on that day in Jerusalem. For some people, they're modernists. And some people, they are believe only in science. And they're atheists. And they're in the crowd. And there came a loud voice from heaven. And the loud voice from heaven said that that the uh, I, my father and Jesus said that, and an angel was spoken to him and Jesus answered and said fear not. A loud voice spoke and said this is my beloved son and then when they said well then some said in the crowd that there was a thunderbolt, because after all, it wasn't really God speaking. It was just a thunderbolt. It came a voice from heaven saying, I have, been, I have both glorified it. Know this is Satan, it's called, glorify thy name, said Jesus Christ. He said, Father, glorify thy name. And a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it, and I will glorify it again. And all the crowd heard these words, I have both glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The Holy Mother Church has been glorified in the past, and it shall be glorified again. And there are two glories of our Holy Church. There is the glory of martyrdom, the glory of those who stood against the great persecutors of the church and died on a cross like our Lord Jesus Christ. And there is the glory of the church by which the church spread its glory throughout the world and was praised as the great uh, protector of the, all, all that is good in the world, such as in the, maid, in the time of Christendom, I have both glorified it, and I will glorify it again. There will be new martyrs who shall glorify my holy church, and there shall be a new glorification of my holy church again. It's going to be glorified again. And the people in the crowd, they hear the words. We know the prophecies. You can look it up on catholicprophecy.com. Yves DuPont. You can look it up. There will come a great victory of the church. There will also be martyrs. Christ has glorified it, and he will glorify it again. The voice came from heaven. Now, there were two groups of people in that crowd. And one group said, it's a thunderbolt. Another one said, no, an angel has spoken to him. What about that second group? An angel has spoken to him. These are good people. It was God the Father that spoke. Not an angel. But an angel has spoken to him. And they believed in him. But they didn't like everything that he said. They wanted to follow him as king. But then Christ made it clear to them, If I be lifted up, which is a Jewish expression that refers to crucifixion, If I be lifted up, I will draw all things to myself. And then the crowd. Notice it's not the Jews speaking this time. 
Notice it's not the Pharisees, it's not the Sadducees, it's not the Bilderbergers, it's not the bad guys, it's not the criminals or the leaders, the bad leaders of the world. It's not the leaders of the one world government. It's the crowd. The crowd now says these words. And then he said, to the signifying what death he would be, when he, he was going to, but then I will draw all things to myself. This is a Jewish expression referring to crucifixion. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that Christ abides forever. These are good Catholics. They knew the law. They knew all the prophecies. We have heard from the law that Christ abides forever. We've heard that Christ is obedient. The priest is supposed to be obedient. Yes, you can say your Latin Mass if you're obedient. You got to be obedient. We know the law. We have all kinds of wonderful lay theologians right now in the conservative movement, and they know the law. They know it so well that Christ is going to reign forever. He's never going to allow his pope to become exceedingly wicked. He's never going to allow the faith to go out from his holy church, from the members thereof, particularly those in the hierarchy. He's never going to allow that to happen. Yes, there'll be bad things, but they'll never allow that to happen. We know the law. It says Christ shall abide forever, and you're being disobedient. <laughs> And you're not following all the rules and regulations. We're very happy about, look at, you're saying there's no positive things happening in the church? SSPX priest has told me this, a Curious St. Peter priest told me this, and other indult priests also told me this. Can't you see the good signs? Yes, the world's getting worse. The Pharisees are worse. The Sadducees are worse. But you know what? People are finding out about the man born blind. I know a man who was born blind. He's not blind anymore. People are converting. I know a man dead four days. And the fathers of the church tell us this is a man dead in sin. Even though Lazarus, of course, is very holy. He signified a man buried in sin. Buried in the habit of sin. Look at that man buried in sin. He's coming out from his sin. He's converted. These are all signs that God's bringing glory back to his church. Can you see it? That's why Bishop Filet and Father Pagliarani and the traditionalists and conservatives throughout the world have to work with the bishops. Can you see it? We have read the law. We know the law. Christ abides forever in his holy church. We know the law so very well. Why don't you know the law? I read it. I'm a lay theologian. They forget there's more to this world than is dreamt of in thy philosophy, Horatio. Or in thy theology, Horatio. Read all the books. Interpret them as you wish. God is still God, and he never changes. And God will still speak through his prophets, even in our times. And the fact is, that the lay theologians don't know the answer. And the new wise way of the world is not the answer. And so the crowd, not the, not, the, not the Pharisees, not the Sadducees, the crowd is upset. We have heard from the law that Christ abides forever, and how canst thou say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Which means crucifixion. Who is this Son of Man? Jesus therefore said to them, Yet a little while the light is among you. Walk while you have the light, that darkness may not overtake you. And this, I believe, is a warning for our times. Walk while you have the light. Archers of the Fev is still right. We cannot play games with the modernists. The popes of the past 2,000 years, before the Vatican II garbage, they are still right. We must uphold the divine truth of sacred scripture. St. Barbara Bellman and St. Thomas Aquinas are still right. The light is still visible. You can look it up now on the internet, but the time will come when you can no longer look it up. Google announced the other day they're going to hand over all of their information to the government by January of next year, 2021. That all of your location information, all movements you make shall be handed over to the government so that you can be monitored for your own good, of course, because after all, if you walk outside without permission... I mean, it's a free country. You're free to do whatever the tyrannical leader tells you to do. And you're free to do something else, which means you're free to be executed. You're free to be thrown in prison. You're free to be shot. There's a lot of freedom out there. Now, the fact is, Google has got total control over you. 
And don't forget about the yahoos at Yahoo. They got control over here too. Who are these guys in charge of Google anyway? And that way, uh, they have they have my information everywhere I move. My eyeballs are in the government record. My fingers are in the government record. And all they have facial recognition. Everything is under under control because if you're not going to be a good citizen, you're going to be punished. Who's going to keep the faith with this kind of persecution? Somehow it seems easier to see the Romans come up with a sword, knock on the door, come in and chop babies in half. Mm. Knock on the door, come in and grab the priest and take him out to be hung, drawn, and quartered in Tyburn Square in London and kill the members of the household. But now you've got Alexa. Mm. Alexa is there. Mm. And Siri is there. Mm. And you have to talk to Alexa and talk to Siri. And Siri and Alexa, they don't approve. Who's going to keep the faith? But everybody says, we don't know this kind of God. Christ was abide forever. He's not supposed to have all these troubles. The Son of Man, what kind of Son of Man? Yet a little while, the light walk. But our Lord says, a little while, the light is among you. Walk while you have the light, that darkness may not overtake you. Christ warned, darkness will overtake those who do not stand for the truth now, when it's still easy. If it is this way in the green wood, what shall it be in the dry, said the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at the way the fire burns the green wood. Look how hot the green wood is. If this is the way it is in the green wood, what shall it be in the dry? If this is the way we respond... In a non-crisis, how will we respond when there's a real crisis? If we are afraid to receive our Lord Jesus Christ now, when we're not even being threatened, what's going to happen when we are really threatened? If we're ready to give up God so quickly and so easily because we know what we need, because you know what it says in the law? You've got to go to Mass every Sunday. That's what it says in the law, right? Well, just because the, the priest doesn't believe in God, that's no reason not to go to Mass. Just because he accepts Vatican II, that's no reason not to go to Mass, because you know what you need. You know so much better than Jesus Christ. You know so much better than our ancestors. You know so much better than God. You know what you need. Why not follow our ancestors, who really knew what they needed? Did they go to the compromised Masses in Hungary and Russia? What about our ancestors that went to the conservative masses in the 1970s? Of the conservative priests, what happened? They lost the faith. What happened to those who were the conservative priests in the, 19, in the 1530s and 1540s and the time of, of Henry VIII and Elizabeth and so on? They lost the faith. And when the real persecution came, they gave in instantaneously. And who were the first ones to give in? The bishops. Who are the next ones to give in? The priests. And then the faithful obeyed their priests and bishops, and they also abandoned God. Already know of cases right now in the last few weeks where priests have already abandoned their sheep. Just in case. Official announcement has been made by the Society of St. Pius X that we will not do sick calls anymore. What if you die ahead of schedule? Hmm. What happens then? We used to anoint you to make sure that we're safe when you're in a real danger of death. Not for no reason. We should not anoint you without reason. But when there's a real danger of death, we used to do that. But now, we don't need to do that anymore. Because we know the law better than Christ. These are the ones that threw palms before his feet. Isn't that encouraging? These holy souls that said, Hosanna to the King of David... We Hosanna, great King of David. No, 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 no. What do you mean you're going to be lifted up? We don't accept that. We accept you as Jesus. We accept you as the Messiah. But not this crucifixion stuff. We accept the faith. But we have to be balanced. We accept the Latin Mass. But you can't be too bad against the new. You can't be too negative against the other things. We're balanced. We want a balanced Christ. But our Lord Jesus Christ, at the end of the day, what happens at the end of Palm Sunday? He hid himself 
and went out. So many souls that have their Latin Mass a few weeks ago, it's now been taken from them. I believe it will come back. I think this is a test. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Who has eyes to see, let him see. Don't go back to modernism. For he who loves his life in this world shall lose it. But he who hates his life in this world shall keep it in life everlasting. Christ's words on Palm Sunday. And then he continues. You walk in the light for a little while, but don't let the darkness overcome you. For he who walks in darkness does not know where he goes. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become the sons of light. These things Jesus spoke, and he went away and hid himself from them. He hid himself from them. It's interesting, the ab eis. Abscondit se ab eis, it says in Latin. Before he hid himself and went out of the temple. He hid himself and went through the midst. Was his last hiding himself? He hides himself ab eis. From them. And it's also these beautiful, mysterious words are spoken during this last during this Palm Sunday as well. And Christ said, read those words. Where I am, there also my minister shall be. If anyone serves me, he let him follow me. And where I am, there also my minister shall be. Christ is not going to abandon his sheep. The minister shall somehow show up. Somehow you will receive an anointing, even though you can't be anointed. Somehow you'll be blessed. Somehow a priest will come and give you the holy sacrifice of the Mass. Somehow you'll receive everything that you need. Wherever Christ is, he speaks differently on Palm Sunday. Wherever I am, there also my minister shall be. But there'll be many places where my minister is and I am not. There'll be Catholic priests here and Catholic priests there. And Christ will not be there. But then there'll be another priest in such and such a place. But that's the place where Christ is. And Christ, and Christ shall see that the minister is there. When Christ goes into a house, he'll bring the minister. The minister may go into many houses and Christ is not there. He spoke these words on Palm Sunday, and then he hid himself and went away from them. Ab eis. And then they would say, let him be crucified. Let his blood be upon us, upon our children. And then there were children would die in the besieging of Jerusalem. And they loved this world more than they loved the next. Have we changed? We're in the New Jerusalem, and the New Jerusalem loves this world more than it loves the next. We need to not love this world more than the next. And as of God, the grace that we persevere through this crisis, this minor crisis we're in right now, and that we walk in the light while we still have the light, so that when the darkness comes, it shall not comprehend us, because it will comprehend all those who do not become the sons of light. But whoever becomes a son of light... Whoever walks through the light now, when the time of darkness comes, the light shall still shine where he is. In Saint, uh, the uh, uh, in Rome, the, the uh, Saint Vincent, not Saint Vincent de Paul, is that, uh, but uh, the Saint in Rome would be taking the the tours of the catacombs. The light went out, and light came out of his heart and shine like a flashlight, and he guided the people out of the catacombs. Light shall come out of our heart if it is filled with the love of God. And we must make our hearts filled with the love of God, our faith filled with faith, the true faith, and that while we are in the light, while the light is still around us, walk in that light, and don't find a wisdom greater than the ancients. Don't find a wisdom greater than the saints. Don't find a wisdom greater than the priests of tradition the last 50 years. Don't find a new way to be traditional, a new way to love God, a new balanced way. By knowing all that we need, Christ knows what we need. Hold the true faith, don't play games with the modernists, and walk in the light, and while we still have the light, then God will bless us, and we'll persevere through the next crisis by the grace of God. And if we fall, what do we do? Weep and return back to God. That's what we must do. 
and the Blessed Virgin will take care of us and bring us back to Him. Make sure the scapular is always around your shoulders, the rosary is always in the pocket, and the words of Christ, the Blessed Mother, are always on our lips, and God will protect us in the great crisis to come. It's the greatest protection, a lot better than a mask, is the scapular. Mm. That protects us from all pestilences and all attacks from the devil. Let's have confidence in God, and wear our scapulars, have confidence in the Holy Rosary, and persevere in the light, and not try to be wiser than our ancients, wiser than the, than the ancient priests of God and the Church of God. Those of God bless you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.